Hello, it's the next part of Minidog, the open source quadrupedal robot, and I'm publishing all the CAD and code to this as I go, and the CAD for this version, which is the second version, will be available on GitHub, and the link's in the description to this video. So this is the second version, and the first version just about walked along, and it did that dynamically using an inertial measurement unit to alter the rate at which it moved, and also translate backwards and forwards to keep its centre of gravity on, and it did that by driving a kinematic model and an interpolation engine engine so that we could move those legs back in perfectly straight lines or as near as the mechanical assembly would allow. So we had quite a lot of twist and slop in that design. You can check out the first five videos in the series to see that one. And now we're on to the second iteration of the design which should have a much better mechanical assembly having moved away some of those offsets on the legs so that force is applied directly to the pivot points. So here are my electronics. I've reprinted the box in orange to match this dog but otherwise it's exactly the same as version one. In the bottom is a teen 3.6 which is 180 megahertz 32-bit Arduino compatible microcontroller and on top we've got the Adafruit MPU6050 inertial measurement unit and we've got the NRF24L01 which is the radio chip for the remote control. So inside the dog I've built this little saddle that sits on the crossbar there and that's going to hold two lipos one either side and these are the same batteries out of the first version which are fine to power everything. And you'll notice there's a little recess in the top here and that's for a Velcro strap to go round to hold the batteries in. On top of that is a shelf which is stuck down with double-sided sticky tape and that's got a recess in it which the electronics neatly fit in. So the first thing to do is wire in some power distribution and I've got a nice switch here which is going to be illuminated just like the last one but green instead of red and that's on a bridge piece that's going to zip tie in here somewhere. So I've wired in some power distribution to the battery so now we've got our illuminated power switch, we've got a voltage display here which tells us the battery voltage and we've got these four regulators that exist in the corners and these are 10 amp apparently, ones I got off eBay which are adjustable and they're set to 6 volts so we can power all of the leg servos and of course there's one for each leg. I've also got another 5 volt regulator to power the electronics and that's going to link to the electronics via this cable and the connector and the rest of these wires are the servo signal that comes out to the servo breakout and I've just taken these out of the old robot and of course each of those wires to the power on each side so we power each set of three servos from a different regulator. So my servo distribution boards are back in and those have got power from the regulators and they're linked to the electronics. So now we just need to plug all the servos in in the right order and we should be able to get it powered up. And you'll notice everything's recessed inside the frame and that means that we've got clearance for the legs. It can lie on its back and it can be neatly packed up for transport if I need to take it anywhere. So I've restructured my kinematic model so that the dog does is three axes of translation up and down side to side in perfectly straight lines, backwards and forwards. And it also does three axes of rotation, which are pitch, roll, and it also does yaw. And of course, all of those mixed together, however you like, and all of those numbers flow from one stage to the next. And if you want to see this working and how I did it with the previous dog and how I did all of the calculations, then you can check out part four of the series. And you'll notice the feet slipping on the ground a bit there as it did with the previous version, and that's because the servos run their end stops and some of the legs can't get longer or shorter enough for extreme moves combining some of those axes at once and so the math is right but the robot's wrong. And this kinematic model's marginally easier to work out than the previous one because we don't have that weird offset on the roll axis and on the translation axis side to side because we now have of course those feet directly under the pivot point which is a significant design change in the second version. And it feels much more stable and much more stocky and much more solid on the ground but is it going to walk any better? But before we find out, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor. Yes, it's Raid Shadow Legends, which is a really popular turn-based role-playing game. It's free to play right now and available on PC, but it can also be played cross-device on your Android or iPhone. And now they've doubled the daily login rewards program for new players from 90 to 180 days. You can claim your free rewards each day. The rewards include silver gems and shards and a free barbarian legendary champion, Sile of the Drakes. Check out the link in the description of this video. If you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver, one energy refill, 50 gems, and one free champion, Executioner. Just look how cool, calm, and collected he is. 
you'll find your extra rewards in your inbox for the next 30 days only. So I've set up a simple walking gate and this only takes one leg off the ground at a time. So this is statically stable and that means it's not using any dynamics, it's not using any balance, it's just leaning side to side and walking a bit like a dog does where it does the back leg and the front leg on each side. Now I do have the ability to speed this up using the interpolation we did a couple of videos ago. So as I push this faster, the gate gets quicker and I can slow it back down again or I can in fact go even slower and you can see that gate. So there is a bit of a sweet spot as to the speed it goes and I've also implemented a feature where the translation is infected so you should be able to see the legs moving forward a tiny amount there as I push the stick forward because otherwise it tends to tip over forwards so it's just bringing the center of gravity back a bit as it goes faster and that seems to work pretty well but there's no sense of balance this is just hard coded. So there is a sweet spot at which it works best. Obviously it's got a balance on three legs and even though it's leaning over it still tends to tip onto the leg that's off the ground a little bit and at a specific speed and a specific translation back to front that all seems to be solved. But of course it is statically stable so it can't sense that it's tipping over and modify any of the parameters. I guess we could build something into this but ultimately it's a statically stable gate and it can stop at any point and leave one leg off the ground which is pretty good and that means we can make it walk, we can make it do all of the rotation and sidestepping and that sort of thing and I'm pretty confident we can make it walk even if the dynamics are bad so that's pretty good for this project. I did actually test this code on the previous dog but it was so terrible because of the mechanical slot that I didn't even show it in the last video so I'm pretty happy this code works straight away and this dog's rigid enough in its joints with all of those design changes that it can walk statically stable which is actually quite an achievement for a rigid mechanism unlike the previous one. So you can see it leaning side to side there and taking its steps. It looks a bit awkward, but ultimately it does go along, which is pretty good. But can we make it walk dynamically, balancing on just two legs at a time? And we achieved this with the previous version, and when it works, it looks really good, and it looks really easy, because it's using diagonal legs, so you'd assume it's balanced, but actually getting there is quite hard, because it does want to fall over in either direction. Of course, it's going forwards as well, so we need to maintain that balance and maintain its center of gravity over the two legs. So hopefully this construction is a lot more solid, we don't have so much twist in it and stuff, and it should be easier to get it to work in exactly the same way. So I've just set up that simple walking gate again where we've got two pairs of legs which act together and the other two act together as well in diagonal pairs. And what we did last time to try and keep this stable was vary the rate at which it walked, a bit like a two wheel balancing robot balancing over its wheels based on how much it was tipping. And we also varied the translation backwards and forwards, so how back or forwards the overall feet are in relation to the tip as well to keep the center of gravity over the two balancing legs. So it's gonna take quite a bit of tuning. Last time I did show you all of that tuning and how long it took me to get it to work. And this time we're just gonna go straight for it hopefully. So here we go, it does work a lot better than last time and it was relatively more easy to tune than the last one and I'll talk about how I did that at the end but first of all I'm going to talk about the things that don't work well. So I am pushing the maximum speed of the servos here to try and get the sweet spot for the, basically the coefficient of the mechanism of the robot at the right rate which is really easy to make it balance. Um, and that does mean that those servos don't necessarily all achieve their positions especially when they're moving backwards before they have to pick up again so you can see that the feet do appear to slip on the ground quite a bit. So I got rid of the smooth table and did this on carpet because it works marginally better. But you can see those feet do seem to sort of be treading water a bit. And that's because they're picking up before they've actually finished their stroke. You'll also notice the body is quite sort of jerky, even though those feet are moving back at a constant rate. And that's probably due to the slip because it accelerates and decelerates as it takes every step. In fact, instead of moving at a constant rate, which is what was intended. So I found this version with its mechanical assembly much easier to tune than the first one. The first one, even though it did walk in the end, was still quite sloppy and unpredictable due to the mechanical twist. And all I actually did with this one was set the rate of interpolation, so the speed at which it moves between the different positions and the rate at which the feet move backwards and forwards. That was just set so it almost worked by itself with no sense of balance and of course sometimes it's still tipped over. And then I just brought in the inertial measurement unit mapped via a PID controller to the translation backwards and forwards and that's all it's doing so it's not even varying the rate it's walking anymore it's just literally keeping its center of gravity over itself and you can see this if i tip the robot round you'll notice the feet tip back there and here they tip forward very slightly 
and it's only a matter of about 20 millimeters either way that keeps it stable and that's really only a proportional PID controller there's not even any integral or derivative terms in there it could still be tuned slightly better but that works quite consistently and the other thing of course is these feet are quite slippery they are ninja flex so they are flexible rubber material it does slip far too much on a smooth surface to work and that's why I tested it on carpet so we could really do a different profile on here that grips the ground a lot better and of course as I mentioned I'm actually pushing the maximum speed of the servos here so they don't necessarily achieve their position moving back before they have to pick up again which is why they do slip as well so we could try and fudge some numbers there really I want this dog to walk quicker so that we can in fact get it to be more stable and really it does need to walk at a faster rate for its size but unfortunately we just can't push those servos any faster so we end up with them not achieving their positions at all the robot gets much shorter as they can't come down enough and the step length and the step height gets much more shallow then the whole thing becomes a wobbly mess as none of them are in the positions they're supposed to be in and yes for those of you watching closely I zip tied out the springs again because that's the only way I could get it to work so the idea was to have these compliant joints with these fingers and in fact have magnets and hall effect sensors which I haven't installed either which should have made that joint actively compliant so we've actually taken those out this time so the legs are rigid enough because unless it's going to move much faster that compliance probably isn't going to help me it just means the robot's walking on springs that makes it really unpredictable and in terms of compliance I was much happier with the previous test dogs that I made which had brushless motor driven gearboxes that could be back driven with a very low gear ratio and actually we just had a controller that looked at where you were pushing that motor to, back driving the motor, looking at that encoder from the demand and where it actually got to those positions and a controller that drove it part way to that position to make it more compliant or less compliant basically with positive or negative feedback. And that produced a leg that was much more compliant, much more dynamic and basically a quicker route to stability by varying compliance on either side of the robot from the inertial measurement unit data. So after we've done this dog, I'm probably gonna move on to another dog which has a similar drive to that with brushless motors, probably higher torque ones than I had, all 12 axis, and we'll go back to a slightly bigger model. So what I've really learned from this is how to make it dynamically stable, which is the whole point in making a smaller dog before I spend more money and make a bigger one again or try and make open dog work to see what we really need to do. So adding the compliance in as well should make it even easier. But now I know roughly how to balance over the legs, I'm pretty confident we can make that one walk. So I have published all the CAD for this and the code so far. Next time we're gonna come back, put different feet on I think and try and solve some of those issues. And also try to at least make it turn so we can walk around with it instead of it just walking in a straight line forever. So there is another episode of this one, but after that we're gonna move on and make a bigger dog. So if you'd like to support me on Patreon, offer a YouTube channel membership, those links are in the description. Patrons and YouTube channel members get all the videos up to a week early, so they've probably already got the next week's video. And basically, that's really helpful to the channel. So that's all for this episode. Don't forget to check back next time.